All right, this is EOC review number 35 until I need a break. So here we go. So this is a parallelogram EFGH. Gotta find the exact perimeter. I imagine there's gonna be with some radicals because the next one is the perimeter to the nearest tenth and then the area of a parallelogram. So let's start by plotting this thing here. So we have E is negative 1 and 5. So negative 1 and 5 is E. Okay, and then F is 2 and 8. So this is this is F. And then we have G, which is 4 and 4. That's G. And H is 1 and 1. H is 1 and 1. Okay, so those four, connect them together. Those two lines, it's like a slope of negative goes down four and goes over those are different why are those different must have made a mistake slopes goes down four and over two goes down four and over two so it's negative two is the slope for those two that's H now we have E and F looks like it's gonna go up one two three Looks like it went up three and over three. That's a slope of one, which crosses the, the squares nice and evenly. So that's a one to one square. That's a slope of one, positive. Meaning that these are parallel. These are parallel. This is parallel. This is parallel. So, like I said, this was a change in x. And a change in x, change in y, is a change in y is a 1 of 3 to, to 3. Change in y, change in y. This is a change in x. Change in x was, change in x was 3. Change in X here was 3 as well for those two. And then for these ones here, this was a change in 2 for X. Change in X was 2. Also a change in X for 2 for this one. Change in Y for this one. I use pink. This is burgundy. Change in Y for this one was 4. Change in Y for this one was also 4. Okay, so I'll do, uh, what other color do I still have to use? I can use red for all my hypotenuses. Hypotenai. Alright, so this is going to be the square root of, both of these will be the square root of, 4 squared plus 2 squared, 4 squared plus 2 squared, 4 squared. I don't know why I put another square root there. Shouldn't be. 4 squared plus 2 squared, which is 16 plus 4, which is the square root of 20. 
square root of 20. Okay. Square root of 20 is square root of 4 times 5, which is 2 square root of 5. Right, so both of these are the are 2 square root of 5. 2 square root of 5. Okay, and this one these ones here are square root of 3 plus square root of 3, which is uh, 9 plus 9, which is the square root of 18. All right, so these here, I'll just show you, just to save some play space. This was a square root of 3 plus square root of 3 squared, which is 9 plus 9, which is square root of 18. Which is two times two times the square root of three, right? Which is two times nine. Excuse me, two times nine, which is three square root of two. So these are these are three square root of two. And this is three square root of two. So those are the lengths of my hypotenuse. So the exact perimeter in part A. The exact perimeter is going to be equal to two times two times the uh, the two sides sides of these plus two times the single side of these. Okay, so two times of these. I got two of these sides and I got two of these sides. So I'm going to multiply them by two because that's what's like that's going to add those two together. So I got two of the, of the three square root of twos. I got two of the two square root of fives. All right, so adding those together, I end up getting the perimeter equals six square root of two plus four square root of five. And you just treat these like x's and y's. And you just multiply the constants in front of it, that's what you get. All right, so rounding, if I uh, put this into a calculator, I will get something like this. Six times two square root equals, this is like 8.49. Rounding the nearest tenth, so intermediate calculations, I'll round to the hundredth, uh, plus four, times 5 square root equals plus 8.94. I'll add that to plus 8.49. That's confusing. This is going to be equal 17.4. I'm going to do that a different way to make sure that I didn't make a mistake. So 2 square root equals times 6. Check. And then 5 square root equals times 4, check, plus 8.49, check, okay, so I will check that against the, the key. When that is correct, okay, so now we have got to find the area of the parallelogram. Then um, I'm going to do this using uh, the base times the height method. I mean, like, meaning the, the base times the height of the big, so I can zoom out, so see we can just, oh, I'll just move down here. All right, so I talked about, like, the big frame, right? And then I'll find the area of this void, this void area of this area here and then the parallelogram is what is remaining, okay? So each one of these is a triangle. So I'll figure out the areas of these triangles, and this is the, I'll call this the area of the void triangles. And I got two of each one of these triangles here. Okay, so I'm gonna call this the area of the, of the, uh, the frame, okay? So the area of the frame equals, this is the base, times the height is the base times the height which equals 
This goes from negative 1 to 4, negative 1 to 4. So that length is 5 equals 5 times, and this goes from 1, this is 1 to maximum is 5, 8, that's the highest y value, so 8. Right, so this is going to be 8 times 5 is 40, 40 units squared. Okay, so now we have two of the red, red and green triangles. Two of the red and green triangles. So the area, the area of the red and green void, call it. void void red green R G okay that's going to be equal to two times the red and green red and green triangle areas which is three times three makes up two of them right it would be uh, it's effectively a square right like two of these squares, right? So it's just going to be um, the base times height. It says two times one half base times height, right? It's two times one half the base times the height of these two triangles because of the triangle is the base times the height, right? Um, which is this is the base and this is the height, or this is the base and this is the height. But if you see, this is just those cancel out, right? So this is just, these are just two triangles. If you squeeze them together, it makes a, it makes a uh, square. So it's just the base and the height of these opposite side triangles. So it, it, it equals three times three, which equals nine units. And then the same thing for this one. Right, this makes a rectangle, right? So your area of area of your void, area of your burgundy void, we'll call it, um, yeah, it's called burgundy void, is two times, for the same reasons, is two times four times two, four times two. So it's one half the base times the height. Base times the height, which these two, these two here cancel out. So it's just the base times. So it's just the base times the height. So it's just the base times the height, which is just four times two, equals eight units. Okay. So, so this is a, a total area is going to be the 40 units minus this void area, right? Because remember, we're trying to find this area of this parallelogram, which is the fr is uh, surrounded by this frame and these triangles. So we got to take away what is not included inside this parallelogram. So it's going to be 40 minus this uh, 17, because 9 plus. 9 plus 8 is 17, so the area of the frame, so the area of the parallelogram, parallelogram equals 40 units. Uh, I should let me write a, a general a primary equation is the area of the total void, area of the void total, area of the Area the void total, which is area of the void. Oh, no, that's not good. We'll do this. Area of the void total. That's good. Uh, yeah, I should do it like this. 
area of the frame. There we go. Uh, minus the area, area of the void. Total. There we go. Which equals 40 units minus. 17 units. units. So it equals what is that? 28 okay, minus no 27 minus 17 23. Man, what I, I mean, I'm not arithmetic good. All right, 23 units. All right, there we go. That's 23 units. Okay, so that is how we do that one. Pause. Alright, so fill in the blank. Both of these have both the a right cylinder and a right prism have a blank cross section when cut perpendicular to the base. So what does cut perpendicular to the base mean? Well, let's see if I can draw this. So I got perpendicular means like this is the base, the, the base is like this. This circle here. Right, and this this box is like this is hard to draw. Uh, it's like this kinda, I guess, and it goes like this. That's the box, if you could see through it, right. and it would be cut perpendicular to that. So what would the cross section look like if it was cut perpendicular to that? So a perpendicular line, this would be kind of be upsy downsy like this, and this would be kind of upsy downsy like this. Do that too long, like this, right? And then have this line. This would kind of get cut like that. Like this. Through the middle. On the base. Right. And it would cut this thing. This was like a sheet of glass. It would cut this thing like right down the middle here. Kind of like that. It would cut that thing like right there. Imagine that just went shink and cut it right down the middle. Okay, it would be perpendicular to the ground. This should actually be this should actually be like right here. a little better. All right, so that would kind of look like that. Okay, and then same thing with uh, with this. So let's say I like perpendicular this way. I like drew a sheet of glass going like this way. Right, and I cut it. This cross section here would be, they'd both be rectangles, right? So they would both have a rectangular, rectangular cross section. They're both perpendicular to the base. All right, so hopefully that helped a little. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it'd be. When you guys see it in class, it would make more sense because I'll have my, my little uh, things to show you. But anyway, which of the following polygons are cross sections of, that are parallel or perpendicular to the base of a regular pyramid? Well, I guess I should go get my things. Actually, I don't really need to. This is easy to kind of talk through. Okay, which of the following polygons are cross sections that are parallel?
parallel or perpendicular to the base of a regular pentagonal pyramid. Check all that apply. Alright, so pentagonal pyramid. Alright, so pentagonal pyramid. So penta means five. I think that let's see, penta. Let me check real quick. Pentagon means five. Alright, so um, as long as they have the like consistent number of things and they have the um, the uh, parallel uh, they cut parallel at any point uh, along the base like so I have a I'm not gonna even try to draw a pentagon I guess I could man this is tough. Okay, so I got one does this two uh, nope that's not gonna work let me pause this okay so I drew a my best attempt at a uh, pentagonal pyramid right, it's got five sides and it goes up so which ones of these could have cross sections that are perpendicular so it means I could take a cross section anywhere and it would have the same thing well a triangle um, if I have a base as a triangle a trapezoid or a pentagon they could all have the same thing but a parallelogram um, really wouldn't make sense because it changes uh, it changes as it goes up right so um, I couldn't really make a I couldn't really make a uh, like or it doesn't change as it goes up right these are all pyramid types right these all have a slope that gets skinnier as it goes up but if I had a if I had a parallelogram that just kind of went up like this and up like this, right? And a parallelogram like this, and I built it upward like this. Like that. I could take a cross section out of any one of these and they would not be the same. Right, but any triangle or trapezoid or pentagon, because it gets smaller as it goes up, um, it would end up coming to a point. So I could theoretically have a uh, the area be the same at any point where I took that that uh, that cross section out. Okay. All right. So number thirty-eight. Which real world object could be used to describe a figure by rotating a rectangle about a line parallel to the side but not touching a rectangle? Okay. Okay, well, so we have a rectangle. Okay. And then it's going to rotate it this way. Right? And so it's going to. Kind of like, kind of like look down at it. So I'm gonna make like a little loop with the row with the with that, okay. And uh, it's gonna be a little bit thicker, right? Because it's gonna we're looking down like kind of at an angle at it. And this rectangle uh, looks kind ends up looking kind of like a cylinder. To that rectangle and I just kind of loop it around like that. It looks like actually it looks like it would be like a like a tube. Right, so if I just took that rectangle and I kind of like wrapped it around itself and just let the trail, it looks like it would be like a piece of plastic tubing. I think. So that was a little like what it would look like I think if you kind of have to re visualize it three dimensionally. Okay. All right, moving on to number thirty-eight. Yeah, number 39. All right, we have a trapezoid.
Schizoid. <sighs> Trapezoid is extended to create a right angle. What are the coordinates of point B? All right, so we have to extend this line to create a right triangle. And extend this line to create a right triangle. Where does that coordinate end up matching? It's right about there. And it looks like it's about point uh, one comma four.